Glad the Super Bowl's out of Vegas, not gonna lie. I'm happy about it, happy about it. I'm just sick of people saying that I look like Walmart Joe Burrow. It really pisses me <laughs> off. And they don't actually say that to my face, but it's like when they say it to me, like I know what they're talking about, you know? Like I get it, he's a good looking guy, but I had a woman the other day come up to me and she's like, oh my God, Joe Burrow? Oh my God, Joe Burrow? You're Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow? And I'm like, ma'am, we're flying Frontier Airlines right now. <laughs> I'm in row 36, middle seat. Calm the fuck down. I know he lives in Ohio, but how bad do you think he's doing right now? <laughs> I just got cranky old man energy. I love it, man. I'm 36 years old. I wish I was 86. I'm transgenerational. Those are my pronouns, you know? <laughs> I just wish I could do old man shit, right? Like read a map, drive a Buick, right? Jerk off to the Gettysburg Address. I don't know. <laughs> You know, sir, four score, seven years ago. And I'm proud to be an American. At least I know I'm free. That's what I imagine you guys do. I don't know. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it's like, mmm, fixed rate mortgages. Mmm. Mmm. I'm an old man, I got old man tendencies, you know? Like I hate censorship, but I complain about censorship. I don't like it, you know? Like I watch YouTube videos, things now, right? They can't say kill or die, they gotta say unalive, ooh, right? <laughs> they used to do this a lot on TV, you'd watch a movie on television, it'd be rated R, they have to censor out all the curse words with stuff like a fourth grader would say. You know, you're cozy up, watching some movies, Denzel Washington in training days running up to people saying goofy stuff like, go fruit yourself, you side of a biscuit. <laughs> And I'm like, am I high? When does he order off the Denny's menu? I don't remember this part. <laughs> but sometimes the censorship actually makes what they're trying to say worse, case in point. I was watching one of my favorite movies the other day on the TNT network, Casino, with Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, yes. It's fantastic, it's vulgar, it's violent, and you can't censor out Joe Pesci. No, it turns to Home Alone, totally different movie, okay? <laughs> But there's a real scene in the uncensored version where Joe Pesci walks up to Robert De Niro, very intensely points him in the face, says the very real line, don't you go over my head, you Jew motherfucker. <laughs> Great impression, real line, I promise. <laughs> Obviously, if you're watching it at four o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday on the TNT network, you can't say that. It's a little vulgar, it's a little racist, so they gotta censor it out. However, this is how they decided to censor it out to be. Don't you go over my head, you Jew money lover. <laughs> Guys, that is way worse than the original version. <laughs> By my calculations, that's like six million times worse than the original version. <laughs> Who do they got working over at TNT? Hamas and Kanye? What? <laughs> right? I don't know who made that decision, but they sound like a real racist grass hole to me. You know what I'm saying, guys? saying it's that grumpy old man energy in me man i watch you old men walk around so calm you got time to judge everything just angry i watch it hands in pockets when you walk in every room inspect it from top to bottom just <laughs> ceiling's too high i don't like that now <laughs> wires over there that's a fire hazard shit I guess I'll sit here for two hours. Maybe I'll fall asleep in a nice chair. I don't know. <laughs> Such a calming energy. I wish I had that, but I'm a millennial. So my brain's all over the place. My mind's like a dog that can't get home. We're locked outside forever. We're just stressed out. Even something like going to work, very stressful situation for us. It's not an easy thing. Every conversation's like, all right, 15 minutes to get to work. Okay, it takes me 15 minutes to get there. I should be okay. <laughs> Fuck, where are my car keys? I don't know where my car keys are. Okay, I normally leave them on the washing machine. They're not there, okay, they're not on the dresser, they're not on the, uh, oh, oh, here they are on the floor. Okay, eight minutes to get to work, that's not a big deal. I'll get their cell phone. How the fuck am I getting to work without my cell phone? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, okay. It's, oh, it's on my charger, 26%, that's gonna have to do, <gasps> holy shit, three minutes to get to work, I'm totally gonna get fired. <gasps> I'm gonna take a mental health day today. I think that's... It's been a rough 15 minutes after 2 p.m. I think I've... I think I've earned that today. I hate being me, we're stressed out, you know? 
You olds, you guys are resourceful. Oh my God, you guys have so much knowledge. You know more than we think you know. I found this out the hard way. I picked my mom up from the airport. We're gonna take her to lunch. Put the radio on, we're singing, we're having a great time. Bruno Mars pops on the radio, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> Cardi B jumps on the track halfway through. <laughs> Derailed the whole fucking car ride right from there. Because she has this lyric, and I totally forgot my mom was sitting next to me. She has this lyric, and I just belted it out. I was in the moment, and the lyric was, your pussy's basura, my pussy's horchata. <laughs> that is a real Cardi B lyric that I shouted out with my sweet Jewish mother sitting in the passenger seat. I noticed immediately, I was like, I hope she didn't hear it, but moms, they hear everything. She turned, she looked at me, horrified. She's like, oh my God, what was that? You repeated that? That's awful, that's disgusting, that's vulgar. I don't even know what it means. Can you translate what those lyrics mean? <laughs> this is where I fucked up, okay? <laughs> I'm a good millennial son, I wanted to explain it to my mom, but I panicked, and the best I could come up with was, Mom, Cardi B's saying that this other girl's no-no parts, her private areas, it's gross, it's disgusting, it's basura, Spanish for trash. I know that from Spanish 101, don't worry. <laughs> and instead, the guy should get with Cardi B because her no-no parts, her private areas, drip a white, creamy, sticky <laughs> liquid. <laughs> like a horchata machine? Is that what she's fucking talking about on the radio? <laughs> this is why I love you olds. Because I'm pretty sure my mom set me up from jump. Because I turned horrified after what I just said. I looked at her in the passenger seat. She had the biggest smile on her face. And she looked at me with that grin and she was like, ooh, it sounds like Cardi B could use some Monostat 3. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, damn, mom, I didn't know you were a gangster Jew money lover. Where the fuck did you learn how to do that? wild she's a crazy old right she's an old she keeps with the times but then like other things on the time she can't get on board with like my cousin came out as a lesbian during thanksgiving dinner my mom couldn't figure that shit out <laughs> couldn't do it she came up to me and my wife and she was like oh my god did you hear about courtney i was like yeah i was sitting at the table we all heard <laughs> she's like you're not surprised what did she tell you did you know something that i didn't know did she tell you i'm like mom she didn't have to tell me she made her men's varsity basketball team when she was a freshman in high school <laughs> I figured it the fuck out. She talked about how good she was boxing out on and off the court. I put two to two together. Then my mom said something wild. She's like, oh my God, do you think that's why she got a DWI? Mom, what do you think DWI stands for? Dating women instead? I don't comprehend. What do you think cops are doing? Pulling people over? Breathalyzing them for too much woman on their breath? You better hope not, because I'm going to fucking jail. <laughs> I'm driving drunk on that pussy, Mom. Just don't ask any questions. <laughs> I did say I was married, right? That's fun, right? Everybody has a type. My type's feisty. I like feisty women. Sexy, right? People like, like grumpy, like Karens. Nah, just feisty. Feisty women are hot because they, like, they won't fuck around. They'll just go up to anyone in public, and they'll let you know how they feel. They don't care about the repercussions. <laughs> Like my wife, she goes up to people in the grocery store and she'll yell at them if they don't have the appropriate amount of items in the 10 item or less line. She'll walk right up and count those motherfuckers out loud to their face. She'll be like, oh my God, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11. Oh, I didn't realize this was the 11 item or less line. Look, I don't know why the fuck we're standing in line. If no one else is following the rules, I don't think we should follow the fucking rules either, all right? You know I hate coming to this store, by the way. You know I hate it. I'd rather go to the ones across the street where there's more self-checkouts. Now we're stuck at this stupid store behind this dumb bitch that can't fucking count. And I'm like, oh my God, you need to stop. People are staring at us, we're in public. She's like, why, am I embarrassing you? And I'm like, no, I'm hard as fuck about to tear through my jeans. <laughs> yeah. Calm your tits before I come on them, lady, all right? <laughs> oh, psycho, fuck. It's hot, right? She's an Italian woman. She's like, I'm feisty, because I'm Italian. All right, you can't win an argument with an Italian woman. I've tried. 
You always think you're the favorite. You always go in with a good plan. You might be winning in the first half. You never succeed, right? Essentially, arguing with an Italian woman is like playing the Super Bowl as the San Francisco 49ers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you get into the fourth quarter thinking you're doing okay, and then all of a sudden you're like, we fucking lost again? I had control of this shit. Fire the coach. <sighs> Some of you guys felt that in your soul, all right? Some of you guys felt that. I never win. One of our biggest arguments, and I don't like it, and I bring this up and I complain about it because my wife's not full Italian. She's not. She's 50% which is bullshit, because I'm 100% banned from my favorite Italian restaurant. <laughs> Olive Garden. <laughs> okay, people judge, right? And I don't think they should judge. I think it's very Italian. She does not. She always yells at me. She's like, it's not authentic Italian food. Well, relax. But I cheat, right? I door dash it. I get high. I try to wolf it down before she gets home. <laughs> Make sure there's no evidence, no Parmesan cheese on the pants, right? No marinara sauce on the collar. Smooth. But one day she caught me, busted me, red-handed, right? Literally. His hands deep in it, fucking woofing it down. She comes home like an angry Joe Pesci if he fucked a Furby. I'm like, what's the matter with you, Sarah? What's going on? She's like, oh my God, Olive Garden? Really? That's not authentic Italian food. How are you eating that shit? And I was like, Sarah, you're not authentic Italian. And I eat you every single day. Never had an issue before. <laughs> Didn't hear any complaints when I was twirling that clit like pasta fajoule, all right? <laughs> Heard silence when you were getting bottomless breadsticks, all right? <laughs> I'm not married anymore, by the way, guys, I'm not. <laughs> no. I'm actually a widower, it's a real thing. It's, I don't, okay, well, that, that's a weird thing. If I came out in a wheelchair, would you guys go, aww? No, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the sentiment, I do, guys, it's cool. People don't know how to act around me when I talk about it, I get it, it's a hard subject to talk about, it's a weird subject to talk about. Even my old roommate had a real hard time with it. He would try to like do the appropriate things and would put me in like very uncomfortable situations by doing it. Right, like we were watching a movie once. 10 minutes into the movie, the main character's wife passed away. Yeah, and then he shut the fucking movie off. <laughs> For 38 minutes in dead silence with snacks that nobody wanted. It was the worst afternoon on the planet. Look, I know why he did it, okay? I get it, he's trying to look out for me. I understand that. However, it's been a few years. I'm gonna have some fun now, okay? And that's exactly what I did. I'm gonna ask questions. I go, hey, John, like, what's the deal with that? I thought we were watching the movie. Is there something wrong with the TV? Can you pop it back on? He goes, yeah, I panicked. I saw that the main character's wife passed away and I didn't know what you were about to do. I'm like, we're watching John Wick. What the fuck did you think I was about to do? <laughs> think I was gonna become a sleeper cell assassin, start murdering Russian terrorists? Come on, man, there's five movies. If anyone should see the rest of this shit, it should be me. I need to know what widowers can do with all the free time. <laughs> oh, I love him. I try to date again, I try to get on the apps. People weren't ready for that. My friends, my millennial friends, instead of just giving me good advice, they try to like coddle me and it made it uncomfortable. Like my friend Brian, good looking dude. I'm like, hey man, I'm trying to get back on the apps again. What are the pros of dating? What are the cons? Help me out. He looks at me panicked. He wasn't expecting this question today. And instead of just being honest with me, he tried to coddle me. And he goes, to be honest with you, bro, you should just stay single. It's like, you don't want to deal with any of this shit anymore. He's like, I went on a date with a girl the other day and then she just totally ghosted me. And I look at him and I'm like, yes, I have no idea what being ghosted feels like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up. You just sound like my haunted apartment. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. And by the way, guys, just because somebody doesn't text you back or doesn't show up to a date doesn't mean you're ghosted. That's my fucking word. I'm taking that shit back. I'm ghosted, okay? Because if you guys wanted to text someone who didn't text you back, you can. You can pick up your phone and do that. To text my ex, I gotta pull the Ouija board off the shelf, all right? I can't send dick pics anymore. I can't do it that easily. I gotta unravel it on the board. Trace it with the magnifying glass. Do you 
like the way my dick looks. Yes. Send me a picture of your ass and the board flips over. It's crazy. So I'm just saying, guys, ghosted is my word, okay? I shouldn't have to say my wife passed. You know what, friend? Instead of her texting you back, bitch, she passed on you. She passed. <laughs> That was an interesting noise. <laughs> I like that. I'm dating again now, though. I'm dating a wonderful woman. She's cool. She's awesome, right? And people always ask, they're like, you guys gonna get married? No. <laughs> and they're like, why? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't want to. They're like, why don't you want to? Are you afraid you're gonna get hurt again? I'm afraid, I'm gonna be honest, but I'm not afraid that I'm gonna get hurt again, that's silly, no. I'm afraid for a simple reason, and the reason is, one dead wife, you get sympathy. <laughs> the second dead wife, you're the fucking suspect every <laughs> single time. Some of you guys haven't been laughing because you're like, wait a second, let's hear how she died first, all right? <laughs> you're like, don't do this to us. First OJ, now Joe Burrow, we can't handle this shit. <laughs> And I've been Spiro, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah.